This is part two of the normal mode video. So uh, we are considering these two masses coupled by three springs. Um, we found uh, the eigenvalues, uh, uh, m lambda squared, and now we're looking for the eigenvectors. So with the first uh, eigenvalue, m lambda squared equals minus k, we have the eigenvector 1, 1. For the uh, second eigenvalue, m lambda squared equals uh, minus k plus 2 capital K. Uh, we're using the equation um, a minus m lambda squared i times v equal to zero to find the um, eigenfunctions. So in this case, we subtract, we add little k plus 2k to the uh, diagonal element in the first row. So the um, little k cancels, and then we have minus big K plus 2 big K gives us big K. So in this case, we will end up with big K times V1, the first component of the eigenvector, plus big K times V2 equals 0 or V2 equals minus V1. So our eigenvector, so this is the side calculation one needs to do. So the eigenvector here then can be normalized to 1 minus 1. V2 is minus 1. Okay? So now we've got <coughs> our eigenvalues two eigenvalues and two associated eigenvectors. Um, but uh, our solution on SOTS was V times E to the lambda T. So we have one V, right? The first eigenfunction is one, one. And then what is lambda associated with that one? Well, m lambda squared is minus k. So lambda associated with that one is the square root of minus k over m, plus or minus the square root of minus k over m, is plus or minus i times root k over m, which I can call plus or minus i omega 1. Okay. Now what about V2? So V2 is our 1 minus 1 and the lambda associated with that is uh, divide by M and take the square root is plus or minus I root K plus 2 capital K over M which is, I'm going to call plus or minus i omega 2, okay? And that's all, that, that's all we need now to construct a general solution. So we have um, our ansatz, x is equal to v e to the lambda t. We have two v's and we have these four lambdas. And we can do a linear superposition of them. So we can take our first v and then uh, multiply by e to the i omega 1 t plus e to the minus i omega 1 t. That will give us uh, cosine omega 1 t. Or we can have v1 times e to the i omega 1 t minus e to the minus i omega 1 t. That will give us a sine omega 1 t. And we can have any arbitrary constant multiplying the cosine or the sine. So if we do the principle of linear superposition, we can put a general solution together. So x of t then is equal to v1, which is 1, 1, 
and then we form a linear combination of e to the i omega 1t and e to the minus i omega 1t. So we can have a constant times cosine omega 1t plus another constant times sine omega 1t. Okay? And similarly for the second eigenfunction, 1 minus 1, we can have a constant times cosine omega 2t plus another constant times sine omega 2t. Okay? And that's our general solution where our first angular frequency is uh, root k over m and our second angular frequency is root k plus 2 capital K over m. Okay? And that's the uh, general solution. So what is the meaning of these uh, two solutions? Right? Well, if we go back um, to draw the picture. Right? The normal modes uh, that I refer to in the, the title of this video are the oscillations that occur only with a single frequency. Okay? So how do we get this uh, oscillator to move so that there's only a single frequency omega 1, right? We can do that if C and D are 0 and we can get initial conditions, right? So first of all I should say that there are requirement of four initial conditions in this problem and four free constants A, B, C, D. Those initial conditions are the initial position of the first mass the initial velocity of the first mass, the initial position of the second mass, and the initial velocity of the second mass. So there's four initial conditions. And we can set up those initial conditions so that C and D are initially zero. The way we do that is that we require x2 equal to x1. So that means we have an initial displacement of these two masses that are the same and we require x2 dot is equal to x1 dot. Okay, so let me uh, put back the uh, spring constants here. So in those two initial displacements we have the motion if x1 equals x2, so this is going this way, this one's going this way, or this one's going back, and this one's going back. So we have an oscillation of the masses together going back and forth. So the middle spring doesn't change length, right? The middle spring doesn't change length. Which is why omega 1 is independent of the middle spring constant, right? Independent of uh, big K. Okay, so that's the first normal mode. So this is what we call normal mode number one. Okay? How else can these, uh, what is the second normal mode? So what is the motion where that exhibits omega 2? So initial conditions where A and B equals zero. That would correspond to x2 equal to minus x1 x2 dot equal to minus x1 dot. Okay? So the normal mode number two would correspond to x1 going this way, x2 is negative x1, so going the opposite way. Or x1 moving, mass m moving to the left, mass 2 moving to the right. And this corresponds to omega 2 equals root k plus 2 capital K 
over m. Okay, so the motion then is of uh, sorry, the motion then is of this way in out in out in out in out. Okay, and with that motion, you can see that when this mat this spring gets stretched a distance delta k. And this, this spring gets stretched a distance delta k. Then the middle spring gets stretched, gets compressed a distance 2 delta k. Okay, let me say that one more time. Okay, because I, I should use delta x. So when this spring gets stretched a distance delta x, and this spring gets stretched this way a distance delta x, then this middle spring gets compressed a distance to delta x. And that's where this factor of 2 comes from. So this is normal mode number 2. Okay. So when the masses are exhibiting this type of motion, there's only one frequency. When the masses are exhibiting this type of motion, there's only one frequency. And the general motion of these two masses then is a linear superposition of these two types of motions. And that's our expression here for x of t. A linear superposition of normal mode 1, which is the a and b term, and, a linear, and normal mode 2, which is the c and d term. Okay.